folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is we'd go over an ultralight scout kit. Had a lot of questions about kit and weight, what's in the kit, things like that when we did our three part series, our basic overnight. Understand that that kit is meant to be, I don't know how long I'm gonna stay in the woods. Might be a day, might be a week. If I know I'm going on an ultralight scout where I'm only gonna be out one, two days, my kit can be considerably lightened up to something like this. And you're only talking, you know, with a full-on queen wool blanket, probably less than 20 pounds easy. If I didn't have a full tank of water in there and an axe, probably be down to less than 10 without the wool blanket. So stay with me, guys. We're going to break this out, get a camp set up, and we'll go over the contents of this kit while we're at it. Okay, so this is the way I would set my oil cloth tarp up if I were going to use a hammock type setup in the summertime. And my hammock is very low to the ground. When I sit in that hammock, there's only about that much space between me and the ground. The less space there is between me and the ground, the less chance I've got of suffering from heavy convection problems. I've got three stakes, but I've switched to plastic stakes to go lighter for a scout type kit where I'm going to be on the move a lot. Probably not going to stop until right before dusk. Set up, tear down, move out. I'm trying to cover miles. What I've done is I have incorporated this hammock into this tarp, but I've pulled two sides of this tarp in, moved one tie out back so that I get that shielding on both sides if I get some kind of a driving rain or whatever and I've got a place for that water to run off really good and sheet off. It gives me that enclosed space without closing it in all the way and keeping any air from being inside there. I want that convective breeze to blow through there in the summertime, even in a hammock. It's a very comfortable night's sleep like this. There's no question about it. Would I give up my wool blanket for the hammock? Absolutely not. Would I carry the hammock and the wool blanket? Yes, but I make other sacrifices for that. I've foregone the iron stakes. I've went with plastic stakes. I'm carrying less gear. I've got a smaller pack set up, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But I'm not going to give up this heavy-duty tarp, no matter what, just like I'm not going to give up that wool blanket. Because a Silni tarp is not going to last you if you're abusing it. It's going to be fine if you're a weekend camper, you know, you're a little trail hiker, whatever the case may be, you'll be able to get away with that tarp. But if you're going to be in the woods punishing this thing a lot, maybe you're going to have to drag a deer out on the thing, you're going to be dragging firewood around your camp on top of it, Whatever the case may be, you want to use and abuse this thing, get yourself a good tarp and sacrifice a little bit of weight. Everything is related to rate versus weight. How much does this thing weigh versus what it's going to do for me? You know, my pack in this setup is less than 20 pounds. That includes a wool blanket and a full bottle of water, less than 20 pounds. That's light enough for anybody's standards by far. But I can do everything with this I need to do. I've got all my bases covered. We'll walk through the kit in just a few minutes, but I'm not going to sacrifice that heavy-duty tarp. I'm not going to sacrifice that wool blanket. Okay, now before I show you taking this camp down and packing it back up, what it packs up like I want to and what we're carrying we've been doing quite a bit of scouting this morning and I just want to throw this up for you real quick not where I'm planning on spending the night I want to show it to you real fast so you can see it um, what I think is important is for you to understand how high this hammock is off the ground if you get in this hammock it's going to stretch and you can see that it's pretty close to the ground now this is there's plenty of space between me and the ground underneath me but not so much space that I'm going to get a whole lot of convection problems. And I've got the back of this tarp down pretty well to keep the breeze from coming through too bad. Now I do want some convection right now because it's plenty warm outside. If it were going to get down to the 50s tonight and I was going to use the wool blanket to help battle convection underneath me and over me, then I might want to drop this tarp down a little bit more up here, which is going to drop it down close to the ground all the way around. But you know this... This eight foot hammock actually is plenty big for me because I'm only five foot eight. So there's plenty of room in this hammock for me. One thing that you want to remember with hammocks is when you get in this thing, you want to feel how you're laying because you never want your 
head downhill. Just like we talked about in our basic camp videos, you don't want to sleep with your head on a downhill slope. You'll wake up with one heck of a headache and not understand why. And it's because all the blood has been flowing to your head all night long. So this is pretty good right here. I got plenty of protection from the rain. I got it plenty opened up so I can get breeze in here at night. And I'm in pretty good shape. So this is a really good quick scout type setup. Doesn't take long to put this up at all. If somebody said, you know, how long does it take you to put that up without the cameras, which I had that question yesterday on another video, to put this whole camp setup up like it is right now without the camera on and adjusting things so you can see what was going on, it would take probably 10 minutes or less to set this up, in all honesty. I will show you a couple of little tricks, tips, whatever you want to call them, that I did while I was setting this tarp up. You know that uh, we've talked many times in the past about having that prussic loop on the end, or that, uh, sorry, that bowline not on the end of your line so that you can tighten it up against the tree. All I did here was, I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to want my tarp. I didn't know if I wanted to put it inside there and pull it against the tree or not because I wanted to be able to adjust it for my hammock. So what I did was I just stuck it through this loop, this bowline loop, and put a toggle on there so that when I pulled it, it would be against the tree, but I could get it out easy enough if I had to for adjustment. And if I don't have to get it out, I can just leave it and it won't hurt anything. Now, what I did on this side of the tree that's a little bit different than I've done in past videos is I went ahead and looped my line around the tree, and that's pulling tight on the other end, obviously. That's tightening up that bowline knot. And what I would normally do is I would tie a trucker's hitch in here with a self-tightening loop so that I could wrench back against it to tie that trucker's hitch. But what I did in this case was I just brought my tarp up here and I used the loop of my tarp as that loop in the trucker's hitch. And what I mean by that is what I've done is I have pulled this tight just like this and then pulled backwards. Trying to get this camera here for you guys while I'm trying to tie this knot. Not the easiest thing to do in the world. But now I've just used this tie out point on this tarp as my loop for that trucker's hitch. And all I'm going to do is pinch it off right there. Golly. Camera work is a pain. And once I've got that pulled against that loop where I want it, and once I've got that pulled on that loop, I'm just going to use that as my trucker's hitch loop and pull that half hitch in there just like that that comes out real easy. And then if I'm worried about it slipping or anything like that, I can just put a security lark's head in there that'll come out real easy. And then when I'm ready to take the thing down, all I have to do is yank on it. It's going to come completely undone. Okay, so let's pack our kit back up. In our tarp here, we've got our three stakes, our longer lines, and our stake lines. All of that wraps up inside this tarp, and you can see the size of that. And I put that on one side of my pack, just like this. I've got my water bottle. I put it on the other side of my pack. And then everything else goes in the middle. Usually what I'll start with is the hammock down at the bottom and the straps. I've got a piece of plastic sheeting here that's basically just a 55 gallon drum liner. That's my rain gear. So it always goes on the top and I put it right against my back right there. I've got one spare blade I'll tuck it right down beside the water bottle. I have a small roll of cordage. I'll tuck it in the front of the water bottle. I have the contents of my water bottle when my water bottle is full. I'll stuff that right beside the cordage. The three implements that go in the front pocket are my bug dope, my compass, and my duct tape. So I'll slide them down in this front pocket of this Duluth Scout Pack now. And I put the bug dope right between the two. Just like that. 
tuck everything in and pull it up. I very rarely zip that pocket up, to be honest with you, so I can get at it pretty easy if I need to on the fly for the compass or for the duct tape. I've got some food. I've got one packet of rice, and I just put it in there anywhere that it will fit, protected, and I'll stuff a rag around it. And again, you know, this rag's pretty clean, guys. This is not a sweat rag or snot rag. So emergency first aid, it's not like I'm taking something I've been wiping my tail end with and putting it on a cut. That's a fairly clean rag. There ain't nothing sterile once you open it up in the wild anyway. Headlight. I always carry a real frog gig if I'm going out for a scout and I think I'm going to be there overnight. Quick and easy way to catch food around the water's edge is going to be that frog gig. It's a lot easier and quicker than trying to carve one. I'll shove that right down beside my water bottle and my knife on the outside of that pack. Fold my gloves in half and put them in on top. The last thing that goes in this pack is going to be this piece of netting because I do use it quite a bit for other things including wiping off with. So I just scrunch it up a little bit and put it right in the top. Put the flap over the top of that and cinch it down. Now that pack is pretty good as far as a scout pack goes. I've got my blanket attached to the bottom of that with bedroll straps from Deepwood Handcraft. And I'm not sacrificing a whole lot right there. I've taken away quite a bit of weight from this system, but I'm not sacrificing much. I can still get an easy good night's sleep. I just don't have enough items in here to last me long term, but for an overnighter, two, three days even. No problem with this setup. I've got plenty of stuff to cook in because I have my cup, my pack stove, my bottle. I have the accessories that go with that. I have plenty of ways to start firing my belt pouch. I have my cover element by having my heavy duty tarp in there that I'm not sacrificing and my wool blanket. Plus I have a hammock for convenience in there. Again, that's just a convenience item in my book. But it will give you a lot better night's sleep than sleeping on the ground, that is for sure. And then the rest of it's just the essentials that I need. A little bit of cordage. I've got my rifle. Ready to head back on scout. Well, folks, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me here today for this video. Just a short video on a little bit lighter setup that you can use for a scout or a quick hunt. A couple, three days in the woods, no problem. Like I said, the basic series of videos that I did on a basic camp setup where you could go out and stay as long as you needed to stay with that setup. If you're just trying to go out and hike around for a little bit, maybe stay for a night or two, whatever the case may be, you can obviously get away with a lot less gear and a lot lighter gear. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my friends, family, and affiliates. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.